from Odessa, Texas, I say hello to you. Thank you for connecting with us. Today, on Sunday, July 25th, 2021, we want to talk about the prophets of today. But I would like to invite you, if you want to go to the website and download the bulletin of this day, bechurch.us forward slash bulletin, or just go to the website, look for the tab, and then you will find the bulletin of this morning. The other option is if you're watching on a big TV, which I think you are, or on your phone, you have another device, just put the camera of that phone towards this QR code and you will be able also to download the bulletin of this morning. I want to thank you for your support, especially to our dear, beautiful church members for your faithful contributions to Victory Church in Odessa. Thanks to your contributions, we can do what we do. And it is a privilege for us to do that, to serve God. It's a wonderful way to expand the kingdom of God by reaching out to the community. And perhaps you are one of the viewers that constantly care for what we are sharing here and on this platform, well, you are more than welcome to help as well financially. Thank you, Tracy, for the songs that you were singing this morning earlier. Beautiful songs, very inspiring. And thank you, Sebastian, for what you are doing with our broadcast. All right. It's a beautiful morning, and uh, I wanted to start with this beautiful, beautiful picture. This... Uh, this picture actually from, from the ocean shows one of those moments, and I am sure that you have been there observing how the waves of the ocean hit one another. It's, it's special. Of course, in certain areas of the world, you know, those waves, they are very, very tall, and there are surfers there. And it's, it's a cool, such a cool experience to see in person. But uh, this particular picture, I like it for, for the reason that shows how currents in some point uh, hit one another. And you know what? A prophet is something like that. <laughs> it's moving in one direction, and it seems like the... The world is moving in a different direction. God is moving in one direction. We are moving in a different direction. And it just, bam, exactly. So that's why I wanted to point it out to you. And, and it's, a, it's a beautiful picture for a thumbnail. Prophets of today. Would you like to read the scripture with me? You know, this is a beautiful scripture that comes from actually one of the prophets. It's considered one of the minor prophets. And we read from the easy-to-read version in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the Lord God decides to do something, He will first tell His servants, the prophets. Is that powerful or what? Before He does anything with the world, with people, the good Lord is going to share that information, vital information, with his servants, the prophets, which there are many things to, that we can uh, extract from there. Number one is what we just said. Before the Lord moves, he already told somebody, this is what I'm going to do. This is what is going to happen, right? Well, that's one thing. Second thing is that actually prophets are servants of God. Isn't it beautiful? A prophet should be a servant of God. Of course, there are false prophets. <laughs> they are just talking whatever, you know, but they are not precisely coming from the Lord. They are not speaking God's word necessarily. You understand? But a true servant of God, a prophet servant of God is going to deliver God's message. That's beautiful. But speaking about it, I think it's important to, to, to go to certain definitions so what is prophecy? Do you know that? Well, we hear the word here and there, but prophecy basically is a divine revelation of unknown facts or events. When the Lord reveals something in a divine way to his servants, the prophets, it has to do with unknown 
facts or unknown events. Many people say, well, prophecy is something about the future. <laughs> Certainly, but also prophecy sometimes reveals unknown facts about certain things. And there are many examples in the Bible about it. But let's continue with definitions, okay? A verb, prophesy. To prophesy is the act of declaring a prophecy. When someone is able to prophesy, you see the act of revealing or declaring that prophecy, that person is called what? A prophet. So with that in mind, I want us to go together to my, my board. And I want to write some things here for you, starting with uh, time. All right. So let's suppose, let me draw this uh, illustration here for you. The time of the Lord Jesus and before and after the Lord Jesus. So how do we call that season? We call them B.C. What is the meaning of the letters B.C.? Before Christ. And what is the meaning of the letters A.D.? Anno Domini, which is Latin. Latin for the year of the Lord. So when, when you are thinking about the, the timeline, precisely the Bible timeline, you have to consider that many prophets actually were part of all the era before the Lord Jesus. And in fact, we have divided the Bible in two big sections. You know, when the Lord Jesus comes and the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John describe all that, we call that the New Testament, correct? And before the Lord Jesus, we call to all that the Old Testament. Of course you know that. Well, I think. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, with the clear understanding of this Bible timeline, and you think about the Old Testament and the New Testament, let's go quickly through a short list of individuals and characters that are part of the Old Testament, starting with Adam. You remember Noah. You remember Abraham. And of course, all the descendants until Moses. And then we remember the prophet Samuel anointing King David. But then is when we have this special list of prophets. Because today I talk, we are talking about prophets of today. So these prophets are the most important prophets, you could say, in the Old Testament. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. They are very important prophets. And their books are great, filled with amazing revelations. But also we have other group of uh, prophets which in theology, we call them the minor prophets. And there is a list on the screen, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Haggai, my cousin Zechariah. I'm kidding, but I do have a cousin Zechariah in Malachi, which, by the way, is the last prophet in the last book in the Old Testament. So this is a good illustration about what happened with uh, prophets in the Old Testament. But uh, if we continue talking about timeline, do you know that there is a period of silence, approximately 700 years, where there was no message coming from God through prophets? I mean, living prophets they call that a silence, and people said, what happened? Well, let me tell you this. When the Lord Jesus came in the shape, of course, of a human, a baby, baby Jesus, in the Gospels we find two individuals that were some kind of prophets, Simeon and Anna. They were part, and you can find them in the, all the description, what happened uh, in the life of the Lord Jesus, until then, we find in Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down. And after that, you know, we receive more revelation, in this particular case, through Paul, who wrote 
all his letters, starting with Romans, 1 Corinthians, etc. All the list of letters. Until we arrived with probably the one writer that we admire the most because he received the last revelation of all revelations, which is John. Not necessarily John the Baptist. This is a different John. It's one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation. So by having this drawing here on the screen, you have a better understanding of where are the prophets in the Bible timeline? Which ones are in the Old Testament and we in the Old Testament and which ones are in the New Testament? So, and you are thinking, well, that's pretty, pretty cool. I, I like to, to see those things. And uh, somebody might say, I wish you have a better handwriting, Gian. <laughs> I barely can understand your handwriting. Well, you know, I could do better, but uh, I was in a rush. <laughs> Anyways, so speaking about the Old Testament and the New Testament, you remember very well that the one who wrote the first books of the Bible, the first five, was Moses. And those books are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and um, Deuteronomy, the first five books. And other important fact here is that near the year 300 AD, which means what? The year of the Lord, Anno Domini, near in the year 300, is when the church, the council of the church, decided, inspired by the good Lord, which were the writings that they will compile all together in what we know as the canon of the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, okay? So all that gives you an understanding of the prophets, the Bible, the books that you have access today digitally, many websites offering the Bible for free. You just need to find them. And I have my, my preference, of course, but I will suggest you to go to Bible Gateway. In my opinion, is one of the best websites because the variety of options, the different languages, and also not just the language, but the versions. I personally like to, to use the ERV, which is the easy to read version, because uh, probably I think I'm a little bit slow, I think, and I need something that is easy to read. But of course, you have access to different versions there. And it's good for you to read the scripture as much as you want. But all this is connected with us. And it's, of course, connected with uh, what we call the church. How? Well, through the, the ministries that are called the fivefold ministries. And the first one is the job of the evangelist, which what he does is to announce the news that Jesus is the Son of God. You know very well, teachers are those who explain the scripture. Pastor is the one who is always helping the flock, going after them, trying to bring them back to the kingdom of the Lord and helping them in their needs. You have the office of the apostle, which is someone planting churches and also overseeing churches. But uh, you still have the office of the prophet, uh, even today. Now, but what is the purpose of all the work of all these people? Well, their purpose is to edify the church. That is the whole objective. That all together, somehow, you know, individuals that are in a ministry perform to a certain degree these functions. Because uh, even yourself, when you are talking to someone that doesn't know much about uh, the Lord, and you start to share with this person the news that there is hope for them. They are not believers. And you start to telling them, listen, God can help you. That is there for you. And when you present the message of salvation in Jesus Christ, somehow you are serving as an evangelist 
And you say to the person, what if you just connect with God, repent, say your prayers in the name of Jesus, open your heart. How many times have you done that before? I, I think most of us, we have done that quite often. We invite people. Some individuals are very good at it. I have friends that are terrific in evangelism, and they are much, way more better, much better than me. And uh, I just feel sometimes they are so good that it makes me feel inadequate. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's incredible how easy they can talk to a stranger and say, what if we pray here? I have been with guys like this, and they pray in the restaurant, in the convenience store, in the parking lot, in many places, in front of everybody. And listen, it's not that I am not going to do it. I just don't have probably the courage to do such a thing, which probably I should do more. But what I want you to see is that you and I and everybody else, any believer, at some point can perform the office of the evangelist. But there are individuals that they do have that gift. They are pretty good at it. It's like the case of the teacher. The teacher, you know, is, is a person that is able to explain things. Basically, instructs others. So in church, we have guys, they are not... Uh, probably too eloquent to be in front of a, a camera or perhaps in front of the church delivering a sermon. But when they go to, to rooms that are assigned for specific classes, they are so excellent in teaching. And I have learned many things for, from great teachers that I have had all my life. In fact, we need more teachers all the time, particularly with children particularly with children, because we need to continue teaching the children the truths of the Bible, the stories of the Bible. So that is the office of, of the teacher, right? But then you have the pastor. And of course, we all know the pastor is this guy who is in charge in this church, and most people is, is all that they can get. But the, the thing is, pastor as a, as a shepherd is someone that should be not in charge of the church. No, no, no. But taking care of the flock. Is, is a person that cares for the individuals that are members of the church or potential members of the church or anyone in the community that needs spiritual support. You know, sometimes as pastors, we help people with material things, which is a good thing. But please do not forget that the main job is spiritual. The church always will help individuals as long as the church has the resources to help. And of course, if the individual is nice enough <laughs> to find a way to ask things in a good manner. You know, nobody that comes to a church demanding a, with a bad attitude is going to receive anything from anybody in the church simply because they don't, they even are so rude. And that happens everywhere, you know that. So although the pastor will make sure that certain needs are being met for, for the people in the church, materially speaking, financially speaking, mainly his job is to take care of the spiritual growth of individuals. And there is when it's a big need for the pastor to get to know his flock. The pastor needs to know the names of the church members, have some communication with them once in a while, and it's going to be up to the church member if he or she wants to elevate their relationship to the next level. Quite often you find people that they are very, very comfortable with the pastor when he is preaching, teaching, and uh, in, in the midst of all the others, members in the congregation, but they don't want the personalized greeting. Let, uh, let's say, let's have a cup of coffee. I like, oh, no. <laughs> Some people don't like that, and it's okay. But uh, there are individuals that they really want to have that connection. 
the personal relationship with the pastor, which is ideal for the growth of both of them. Do you know that when a pastor has uh, experiences with church members, also the pastor is learning? I cannot tell you how many lessons I have learned of how not to be a pastor <laughs> just by having experiences with the church members. And, and I learned things like, oops, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why did I say that? Stuff like that. And vice versa. The church member also learned things, how to talk to the pastor, how to connect with him and develop a relationship. There are basic things that when a pastor is talking with someone, you know, it's ideal that there is no, let's say, a risk to have uh, any of them, whether it's the pastor and the church member, in a position that somebody will say, we see this guy with this woman alone in such and such place, you know, like in an office environment, stuff like that. You have to follow certain rules in order to protect the integrity and the reputation of both parties, you know. But all those things are part of the human interaction that we have in churches. And the job of the pastor is the spiritual area, delivering messages, sharing with the people the, the truths of the scripture, and taking care of the flock. But you have also the apostle. The apostle is, is an office that is probably much more complex because the apostle is someone that is really good in evangelism. This person goes, talks to people, gain them for the Lord, and then immediately starts teaching them God's word, Bible principles. You see, he's a good teacher. He's a good pastor because he started to, to analyze where are their needs. But the purpose of this particular office is to put together a group of people in order to plant a church, a congregation. Many apostles in the Bible did that. And of course, once they do that, because it's their calling, they are able to train somebody or several somebodies <laughs> in order to have a team. And then the local congregation can continue grow, growing, but under the leadership of other individuals. And by doing that, allows this apostle to move forward to a new territory, a new mission, and on and on. And then is when the, he begins a new let's say, level in his ministry by overseeing pastors and helping them to do their jobs. But finally, we have the office of the prophet that in today's world, it is so needed. Do you remember the definition? We say that prophecy is a divine revelation of unknown facts or events. It is so healthy to have somebody with that gift, the gift of a prophet, I personally love to be around with people that have that gift. And quite often, they come to me, whether it's through a phone call, video chat, in person, many ways. And they say, I would like to tell you something. It's just very strong in my heart. And I say, sure. And when they say that to me, First of all, I think, do they need any help? How can I help? It's very strong in their heart, they say. So I always try to, to be the one providing assistance, right? But <laughs> it is so interesting that I found myself not, the, not being the one providing any assistance, but the one receiving the benefit of a divine revelation of unknown facts or events by a particular person that says to me, wonderful things the Lord is putting in their hearts. I remember occasions when I had people, they were not even part of my church. They were, were driving by, stopped by in my churches. It, people that came because they were related with a church member or they were singers or a guest speaker. Many ways, somebody comes as a guest. And suddenly at some point, 
whether it's with him during the service or after the service, they say to me, I have something in my heart that I want to share with you. And I think it's the Lord talking to you through me. And you know what? When that happens to me, I get so excited. I do. First of all, because let's suppose I'm doing something wrong. Isn't it wonderful to know that the Lord cares so much that he will stop me? Think about it. And I say, go ahead, brother, sister, just shoot. I want to hear it. Whatever I'm doing wrong, I need to hear it. Sometimes, right now in my current church, some of my church members, sometimes some of, some of my friends from other places, other cities and states and countries, suddenly they say something to me. And I just know it's the Lord talking through them. And it's so profound. I just know it. It's like uh, two magnets, right? Like chung, they connect. You remember what I showed you about that graphic? The two waves in the ocean? Like that. Just like that. And I know you understand that. And you say, I do? Yes, you, you understand that. And I will prove it to you. How many times when the preacher is talking, you just stop right there and you say, what did you say? What did you so say? What, what, what did you say? And you just know what the preacher said was coming from heaven for you, right? Well, that happens to me too. That's why I like to hear those declarations, the divine revelation given to somebody with the gift of prophecy. And they, they say those things to me. I love it when it's the correction, but I also love the encouragement. My wife, Tracy, and I have many friends. Sometimes some friends, our friends come to eat in our home. And quite often we pray. Sometimes we say quick prayers, blessing the food, or praying for somebody for a particular reason. But sometimes we take our time praying with some friends. And I'm not saying three hours of prayer. No, I'm just saying 10, 15 minutes, just listening to the, the Spirit of God inside of us. And let me tell you, it's so refreshing. Sometimes Tracy and I are there in the living room or in, your, in our back patio. Sometimes we are outside of the house when they are about to leave and suddenly the Spirit of God comes upon any of them and they say, what do we pray? And sometimes I say, sure, let's pray. And sometimes they say, no, not here. Let's go inside. Oops. And I think, man, I should be more spiritual. <laughs> well, we go inside, friends. And once we are inside and we are praying, Suddenly somebody who is there says something so powerful that they feel in their heart is coming from God for us. It's so refreshing. Not to mention the other aspect of prophecy, which is when the Lord reveals unknown events for the future. Oh, I love to hear that kind of prophecy. And I just say, yes, Lord, tell me, tell me what's, what's next. And do you know why I say, tell me what's next? Because it's written. It says, when the Lord decides to do something, he will first tell his servants, the prophets. So he will. He will, my friend. Prophets, where? On the planet. But especially after Pentecost, they are in the planet. Sometimes, maybe I am a prophet for somebody. Sometimes it's my wife being the prophet for somebody, or prophetess, if you like. <laughs> the important is that we understand that it's the good Lord talking through us, because what is the purpose of the church? The purpose of the fivefold ministries, remember, is to edify the church. That's the objective. But let me ask you this question, okay? Do you hear the voice of the Lord in your heart? Do you, my friend, do you hear his voice in your heart? 
I know you do. And you say, the Lord is talking to me. He doesn't want me to do this. He wants me to stop that. You know, the Lord is talking to me that I should do this. A new adventure, some endeavors, many things. The Lord talks to us in our hearts. So do you hear, do you feel, do you understand that voice in the message the Lord is giving you? The Holy Spirit inside of you is fully able to talk to you all the time. He will, and He does. Now, do you know when the Lord is talking to you through someone? <laughs> oh, that is so powerful, right? Oh, I know. Especially if it's through a message, through a preacher, a minister. Sometimes through a song. And you just know, the Lord is talking to me. Sometimes it's a sticker, a bumper sticker in a, in a car. It's just like, boom, there. You are like, God is talking to me. <laughs> you know, through somebody, through something. Right? No. Now that we are talking about this, would you say that, is that prophetic? What do you think? <laughs> I like to say that it is. I, I like the idea of moving in the supernatural atmosphere of God. Because I live in that supernatural atmosphere. You know, I am alive. He gave me life through my parents, of course. But the life that I have, with all the wonderful things that I possess. And I'm not talking about material stuff. I'm talking about what is in me in my heart, in my mind, that He gives me. Of course, the people around me who love me so much, the love of my grandparents, my parents, my uncles, my siblings, my wife, my children, the love of all my friends. That's beautiful. And it's happening because of the Lord. And now let's go to the next level, the material stuff. So I personally can tell you, without hesitation, I am so blessed. But it's because of Him. Because I live in the supernatural world. My life is absolutely supernatural. Now <laughs> You are thinking, what? <laughs> you are nuts. You are not supernatural. Can you fly? <laughs> no, I don't mean it in that way, my friend. My life is supernatural. I live in the supernatural because He showed me, the Lord showed me that He has the power to speak to me, to provide for me, to heal me, to correct me, to transform things because He has a plan for my life. And also I know that when the time comes when my body will cease to exist, I am not going to really die. I will just transition to the other side of eternity because I live in the supernatural. Therefore, to me, talking about apostolic ministry or prophetic ministry is as real as the evangelistic ministry or the teaching or pastoral ministries. Yeah. It's beautiful when you think about it that it is prophetic. So... That takes me to another question for you. When you say some things to people, some things, do you feel that it is coming from the Lord? <laughs> I get so excited about this because many, many friends of mine have said to me, something so strange happened to me a few days ago. Can I share it with you? And I love to hear stories and testimonies. And I say, sure, please go ahead, tell me. And they say, well, I was doing whatever. And somebody came there. And all of a sudden, which is my favorite part of all this, without any reason, without any information or anything, that will feed my mind. Suddenly I said this and this and that. 
And my friend was in a shock because my friend said, how did you know that? Who told you that? It's very common when you learn to live in the supernatural. The supernatural life that a Christian should be used to live in many levels. You know what? It's written. When the Lord God decides to do something, he will first tell his servants, the prophets. You as a servant of God will perform a prophetic function in some point. When you hear exactly what the Lord is telling you in your heart about somebody and you share that with other individuals. Now, you know that there are ways to do this. Some individuals like to present those messages with uh, certain characteristics and the way to deliver the message, including, of course, speaking in tongues, the interpretation of that, the trembling, the shaking. Some individuals choose to have music, special music with particular instruments to create, a, a, let's say, an environment, you know, ambience. So some of, some of them, they think that that makes the act of uh, revealing God's messages uh, probably more powerful. I respect that. But I know that when the Lord is talking, with or without music, <laughs> when the Lord is talking through you with angelical tongues speaking by you or somebody else or without them, without you shaking or trembling. Because you don't need to be in any ecstasy necessarily. It's absolutely biblical to live experiences in the Spirit. I have lived those. Those experiences transformed my life. And I know when the Holy Spirit is working in me, how He moves is beautiful. And that is what we call the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But with the pass of the time, you learn even how to minister, how to share God's word under the anointing without necessarily adding all those other items or elements for the sake of the hearer. Because when it's from God, nothing is going to stop it. You know? How many years the church has been growing and growing without internet, without sound systems or microphones or podcasts? <laughs> you know? And the same thing applies to all these other elements. When the Lord speaks through somebody, it doesn't matter what kind of personality this individual has. And if it's prophetic, it's going to happen. And when the individuals, the hearers, are willing to listen and put in the balance with what the Scripture says, you know that there is no way that a prophetic message coming from God is going to be a contradiction to the Scripture because the Lord is not going to contradict Himself. So part of the prophecy that comes from the Lord, from prophets of today, sometimes will be controversial. But the best way that you can really test it is if that goes along with the principles of the Scripture. Because if somebody comes to me with a special outfit and the whole gear of a prophet and tells me something that the Lord says, but it goes against the Scripture... I will say to this person, I appreciate the message, but that is not what the scripture says, my friend. So have a good day. The best prophecy is already written. It's already in the scripture. So you don't need to go after any special individuals. You know, when the Lord wants to talk to you, he will talk to you. 
So next Sunday, on August 1st, worship service 249, the message will be, is it too late? Really? And you will see how prophecy connects totally with this. Come back to us next Sunday. But to finish this reflection, I want to read with you a particular story, something that happened to Peter and John in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 1, 3, forward. Let's read it. One day, Peter and John went to the temple area. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which was the time for the daily temple prayer service. As they were entering the temple area, a man was there who had been crippled all his life. He was being carried by some friends who brought him to the temple every day. They put him by one of the gates outside the temple. It was called Beautiful Gate. There he begged for money from the people going to the temple. That day he saw Peter and John going into the temple area. He asked them for money. Peter and John looked at the crippled man and said, Look at us. He looked at them. <laughs> Can you imagine that moment? He's begging for money, right? Think about this. When, when somebody is asking for money there, well, and you feel bad or whatever, you just look for some cash available and you give the money. And honestly, most of the time, you give the money as soon as you can and you get out of there. As soon as you can, you want to get rid of this very uh, difficult moment as soon as you can, right? And you want to continue going on with your life. But imagine for those individuals that are there, particularly crippled, in the temple, begging for money. They are used to hear probably the coins going, in, going into this plate they have. You know, bling, 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 bling. <laughs> I don't know. But they were just used to receive mercy, the pity from people. And suddenly this guy who is there, help me please, help me please. And then suddenly Peter and John, they show up, they walk, he asked them for money, and then Peter and John, looking at, looking at him, say, look at us. <laughs> this guy just jumped, right? What? What? <laughs> He looked at them. He thought they will give him some money. Well, if they are yelling at me, if they, they are yelling my name, they want me to, to look at them. They must have something really good. He was thinking of money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold. Can you imagine this guy? Oh, gosh. Don't tell me you are one of those who is going to, to give me a pitch about something. Please don't, don't do that. He was thinking, right? Peter goes, I don't have any silver or gold, but I do have something else I can give you. So this guy at that moment is thinking, what could be that? Now remember, he is in need for material things. So many things could go through his mind. Do you realize, my friend, how many people are around you in need for many things? And they are used to. They just need this. They need that. They are asking, help me with this, help me with that. And they go from one person to the other. And eventually they come to you. Perhaps you are not even thinking about it. But suddenly you receive something in your heart from the Lord, something that you must say, something that you must do. Tell me if that is not controversial. But remember what we said earlier? You hear the voice of the Lord in your heart. Do you? You know when someone is talking to you in the name of the Lord. Right? You also know that sometimes you speak to people from the Lord. Right? Well, here we go. Sometimes could be a very specific instances, the most controversial moments, perhaps, in your life. And you don't know that the Lord will use you if you are willing to listen. That is the important thing here about this message, prophets of today. Are you willing to listen the voice of the Lord? 
and do what he says. When he says, do it. That requires courage, faith. You have to be fully convinced that, that you live in the supernatural, right? Oh, yes, I like to live in the supernatural. I love that illustration. Everything God gives me, I'm blessed. I live in the supernatural. Look all the stuff that I have. I live in the supernatural. Many people think about the supernatural, but basically they are saying, I just want to get rich. I want stuff. The supernatural abundance of God. The supernatural health. The supernatural provision. The miracles in my life. Whatever I do is, is successful. I succeed in everything. The anointing of God is with me. Many people think about that when it's the supernatural. But what about moments that you will live? And pay close attention to this, my friend. Moments that you will live in the future, perhaps in the near future, you will be in a particular controversial moment. In that moment, the Lord is going to tell you, you have to do something, you have to say something, and it's in public, and probably it's going to be embarrassing for you, and you don't know what to do, but you know it. It's time for you to do something that is in the supernatural. Peter looked at this guy and said, I don't have any silver or gold, but I do have something else I can give you by the power of Jesus Christ from Nazareth. Stand up and walk. You don't know what the Lord can do through you. You don't know when the Lord can heal somebody. You just don't know when the Lord will put you in that spot when someone probably is going through a heart attack in public and the Lord says, go and pray for this person. And you just walk by and say, in the name of Jesus, you are going to be healed. You don't know when you will be in the midst of a car accident and you can say a prayer and you will speak those words in the name of Jesus, stop vehicle. You don't know when you can go to places in the most critical moments of the life of individuals like this crippled man. And you will be the instrument that God needs to use. Because people are in need of your words, of your service as a servant of God. That, my friends, is living in the supernatural. It's not about the stuff. It's about listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit Day by day, hour by hour, and doing exactly what he says. Prophets of today. Maybe you are one of those. You know that? Acts 3, 7 through 10. Then Peter took the man's right hand, and lift him up. Immediately his feet and legs became strong. He jumped up, shoot on his feet, stood on his feet, and began to walk. He went into the temple area with them. You see? To the temple area with them. He was walking and jumping and praising God. All the people recognized him. They knew he was the crippled man who always sat by the beautiful gate to beg for money. Now they saw this same man, walking and praising God, they were amazed. They did not understand how this could happen. I cannot tell you how many miracles I have lived by servants of God. I have to be right now very professional to tell you this because deep in my heart I want to cry I would love just to let my emotions go and, and cry of gratitude because there are so many wonderful things that I have lived. And I say like this, I didn't understand how this could happen. Why I didn't die in that accident, in that vehicle, in, with that illness or whatever. How, how this provision came to me I don't know how that happened. Why is it that I am in this particular town doing what I am particularly doing 
I don't understand how this could happen. I could be doing these other things, but I just don't understand how this could happen to me. And at the same time, my friend, how many things the Lord has done through me, touching people's lives. And they said to me, I don't understand how this could happen. And I say all the time, we don't need to understand that. We just don't need to understand it. It's just the supernatural ways of the Lord God. Prophets today, (laughs) more than prophets, servants of God everywhere, if you only believe, if you only allow God to use you, stop pushing the brakes of the Holy Spirit in your life. Stop that. Stop using your mind. You know, like that movie, The Samurai, too many mind, too many mind, <laughs> too much mind or whatever. If you only let the Holy Spirit work fully, freely inside of you, (laughs) you will be walking in the supernatural. Things will happen to you and around you. It's all a matter of believing. If you believe God's word, you should believe this. It's all biblical. So are you ready for a new life, my friend? Are you ready to start? And maybe you are thinking, boy, you guys are nuts. I, I don't even know where to start. Well, what, what if, if we start, if you start, just by opening your heart to be a believer? Do you know that you don't need to do anything just to receive the salvation from God and allow the Holy Spirit to come and dwell inside of you and move you to the next level? Romans 10, 9 declares that. The only requirement is to believe. So open your heart, my friend. Open your heart. And today, I want to put this prayer here. Say it with me. Dear God, you are amazing. You have a plan for everyone. You have a plan for me. I really want to be useful. Please forgive me. Lord, You are the one that I want to adore. You are my God. I open my heart to you, Lord. I confess my sins before you. I want to obey you and trust you and serve you forever, my Lord. Starting today, I want to see life and people exactly as you do. Please help me, Lord, to become the person you want me to be. My friend, all begins on the beautiful cross in Calvary where the Lord Jesus paid the price for your salvation. What if you join your voice and say with me, I am forgiven by Jesus. My Lord can do everything. His word is true and active in me. My life is going to be great and blessed in 2021. Thank you so much for being here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile down on you and show you His kindness. May the Lord answer your prayers and give you peace. From Victory Church Odessa, my wife Tracy, my team, my church members and myself, we say thank you so much for watching and listening. And I wish you a beautiful rest of your Sunday. For watching Victory Church, please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us 
and our phone number is 432-614-9798.